Hello, my name is Lo G, and welcome to part two of this multi melody power up. If you guys enjoy this type of instructional material, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. And now let's get on to the lesson. Okay, so let me recap what we did in part one just so you can get an idea of how the progression is going to flow into part two. Sound like this. This is where part two starts on this B minor right here. So it looks like this. Okay, so the harmony, let's talk about that first. It's the same idea as we were doing in part one. It's just multiple melodies that are all played independently of each other that all spell out a particular chord progression. So the chord progression here would be B minor for those, E or excuse me, D dominant seventh, then G, G minor, and then E minor for those two. Um, it's the same idea. If I just played the normal chord progression, it would sound like this. B minor, D7, G, then G minor, maybe I'll play right here, and then E minor. Okay? So this progression, I think about it like this. B minor is six. This D dominant is five of, we talk, I've talked about five of chords before, five of G, the four chord, and then I'm just playing a minor four chord in an inversion like that. And then the two chord E minor, right? And why am I doing all of those? Because the melody works with that progression. And I think the progression sounds cool. So I'm just playing them together. So that's what I'm implying as I'm playing all of these melodies independently. So of course, the melody is going to sound something like this. We're starting here on the B minor, right? So the melody just by itself is this, right? Baseline is exactly what the chord progression is, right? It's B, D, G, and then B flat, implying the G minor, the flat three of the G chord, and then E, right? So that's what it would be. So if I played just melody and bass line, it would sound like this. Here's the B, here's the D, G, G minor, and then E. Right, and that's getting back to the two chord. So that's what that looks like. And then the middle line, the middle line is a little bit different because it actually moves, uh, it kind of in, it doubles its, its note value, whereas all the other ones kind of always stay the same. So the middle line, instead of just going bum, 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 kind of like it did in part one, it's actually speeding up here just a little bit. It does this figure. So if you can hear that middle line, it sounds like this. So I'll play that slow. Okay, so just by itself with the bass line would be something like this, like that. So why am I playing those notes? Because I like kind of the, the, the heightened motion of that middle line while everything else is just continuing to do what it does. But it also is spelling out the chord, right? So this one is just spelling out B minor, and then it hits this note right here. That's the flat seven of D. And that note is really important because that's the note that makes this chord a five of, right? This dominant seventh. Because D dominant seventh doesn't naturally exist in the key of D. So to get that sound out, I really need to make sure that I'm playing flat seven right there. And that's the role of this middle melody. So let me show you exactly what I'm doing right here. Bass line is just doing what it's doing. Melody is just doing what it's doing. And it looks like this. So this is coming off of part one. So I've got middle finger playing the root, pinky playing the five, pointer finger playing the two. Then for the next little hit, the pointer finger moves up a fret to play the flat three, continuing the melody. And then I also grab the D string with my pointer finger as well to continue the middle line. So it sounds like this, right? So you should hear this and at the same at the same time, right? As long or as well as the bass line, right? That's what we're doing. And I'm playing that by using same kind of picking configuration as, as part one. Pick middle ring to get that first hit, and then I'm just doing pick, or excuse me, middle and ring to hit those next two, like that. Okay? Next chord, moving on to the D, right? Same thing, pick on the bass note, middle finger on the middle melody, ring finger on the top, and this is just a straight bar, because we're playing the root, flat seven, and then the two of the chord just with one finger. And then the pinky moves up to grab the normal three of the D dominant seven, and that continues the melody, so I'll play that. There's a lot of pointer finger moving around with that one. Okay, and then we move down to the standard G, which is just one, five, and then three. Top melody moves up to the sharp four of the chord, like that, so I'll play those three. Okay, next chord, again, this is that G minor with the flat three in the bass. 
This is a literal G minor chord, except flat three is in the bass. Flat three, one, five, right? So listen to how that melody moves, right? Kind of casually walking up like that. And then the melody grabs this high E string underneath the pointer finger, this A right there, right? So, and I'm hitting that with my ring finger, just like that. And then we finish with this E. So this E, I'm playing the root, the flat three, and then the pinky on top is playing the two. But I'm actually playing this full chord, the E, the one, flat three, flat seven, two. I'm playing the full thing because I'm about to play that ring finger note. Not in this part, but in the next part I am. So I'm just getting all those fingers down at once, like that. So I'll play it one more time, a little slower. So we've got all three of these notes, right? That's the bass note, middle note, top melody. And then the next hit, is that playing both of these at the same time, just barring the flat seven and flat three of B. Then moving my bar back here to the fifth fret to grab the root flat seven two of D dominant. Adding that pinky note to continue the melody on the three of D. Then G chord, one, five, three. Play that a little better. Right, here that's the four chord, G major. Playing the chord, sneaking the pinky up two frets from the three to play the sharp four. Then the G minor. That's middle finger, pointer, pinky, right there. Middle on the E, pointer on the D, pinky on the G. And then pointer finger's also playing the open, or not the open, the high E string. You grab that melody, and then these two. Top melody right there, bass note, pointer finger, grabbing the middle note, like that. And I'm playing all those together, so. Again, you want to really memorize the, the fingering and the chord shape so you can play this smoothly without, you know, uh, tripping over yourself as you're trying to play all the chords. Having the fingerings memorized is super important and always thinking ahead of what the next chord is. When you're practicing something like this, it's always important to practice the transitions into the next chord. Because if, let's say you're playing this first chord and you're like, oh, sweet, I've got this really comfortable finger. And let's say maybe you're, you're doing something like this. Right, you got these, and then you move like that to play the next chord. Let's say that's what you're doing. You're thinking, sweet, this fingering is really comfortable. But if you don't practice getting into the next chord, you won't realize like, oh, this fingering is comfortable for this moment, but to transition into the next chord, it's not comfortable at all. So you can't just practice what you're playing at that moment. You always have to practice getting into that and getting out of it with your fingering because you need to make sure your fingering flows comfortably, right? You can't just practice that, that, you know, a snapshot of what your fingering will be at that moment. You have to practice the entire flowing into the part and flowing out of it. So make sure that you're doing that to make sure your fingering is always flowing and you can play all the parts really cleanly. So that's pretty much it with this part. We're just slowly kind of building it up. Um, this uh, backing track will be just this part again from 80 to 100 BPM. And then we'll play both parts together. So that's part one into part two. That sounds like this. Right, we're just continuing moving through all the way up to this E minor. So I'm playing a little fast right there. Again, I actually prefer this part slower, so feel free to play it slow. I think it sounds great slow. Um, or you can practice along with the track and build up the tempo. So anyway, both of those tracks will run, I believe. Uh, the first one's definitely 80 to 100. The next one might be a little bit faster, but... Uh, we'll see what happens. I can't remember, but it doesn't really matter. It's always going to be um, an increasing tempo in a way that's comfortable. So anyway, let's get onto those tracks. Again, we're starting with 80 to 100.
does it for part two of this multi-melody power-up. If you guys enjoyed this type of instructional material, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below, and I will see you in part three.